This video series is brought to you by the ASU Writing Center within the Academic Support Network. Thank you for joining me as we discuss reading assignment descriptions and brainstorming strategies. This third video in our series will discuss reading rubrics. Let's get started. First, let's go over some tips for reading rubrics. Assignment rubrics are meant to give you insight into what your faculty expect to see in your writing and how your writing will be evaluated. As you brainstorm and draft, it can be helpful to refer to the rubric to make sure you are addressing all your faculty's expectations. Faculty also encourage you to visit them during office hours if you have questions about the rubric. Using a rubric alongside your assignment description and an example of the genre can help you really see what your instructor expects from you. One of the most common activities you can complete with a rubric is self-grading. Here are a few tips to make sure you get the most out of self-grading. Be honest with yourself about where your paper is at. It's okay if you didn't do as well as you wanted the first time because you can revise. Approach your paper like you are unfamiliar with the intent of the author. Be clear on the guidelines shared in the rubric, for example, having an effective thesis, and how those guidelines are applied in your class. If it isn't clear what separates an effective thesis from an ineffective one, then ask your instructor. Look at a previous rubric to see areas where you can continue to grow. Have a peer grade you according to the rubric as well. Here is an example of what a rubric from your professor may look like. Rubrics are often divided into the criteria used for grading, seen here on the left, and then the different grade or point levels based on how well that criteria was met, seen here on the right. Rubrics can be a great way to generate questions for your faculty. Let's look at how this rubric could provide you questions you could take into office hours with your instructor. If you read through the criteria and grading options for thesis, the second row, you may wonder what the difference is between an A thesis and a B thesis, or even how to ensure your thesis has depth or complexity which are guidelines highlighted in the C category. These are good questions to bring to your instructor along with your paper so they can see your current thesis. Be sure to look over class material before you meet with your professor. Some of this may be covered in class, which is research you should do on your own before visiting your instructor. Let's conclude this third video with reading rubrics takeaways. Rubrics can help you better understand the faculty's expectations for your assignment. Self-grading can be a helpful practice when guided by a rubric, and rubrics can help you consider questions you'd want to take into a meeting with your instructor. If you have questions about anything we've covered in this video, our online study hub is a great place to post questions and get a tutor response. If you would like to continue learning about this topic, we have a handout that breaks down language commonly used in rubrics to help you understand your instructor's expectations, which can be found at the bottom link. Thank you for joining us to discuss reading rubrics, and we hope to see you in our next segment, Brainstorming. Thank you.